Hi, my name is Stephen Miller. I'm the uh, reference and outreach librarian here at the Wareham Free Library. We're sitting here in the stone room, which is our archives room. I came here from, uh, uh, as a recent graduate from the University of Rhode Island, graduate in the Library Information Services program, and I also was in athletic communications in higher education for seven years at Worcester State University, previous to coming here at Wareham. We have three goals with um, this program that we're bringing to you today. The first one is we'd like to talk to you about books that potential readers might be interested in. Our second goal is to try to um, let you know about some of the services that we offer here at the uh, Wareham Free Library. And lastly, we'd like to try to educate the public because that's one of our most important missions here at the library. The show will run um, every two weeks. We'd like to try to feature many of the faces that you see here every day at the Wareham Free Library. Two adult fiction reads that I really think you'd be very interested in. Um, the first one is The President is Missing by James Patterson and Bill Clinton. What happens when you team up one of the most pro prolific mystery and suspense writers with one of our most popular presidents? You get a novel that begins with threats of cyber terror that could cripple the United States. As a result, uncertainty and fear grip Washington, D.C. There are murmurs behind closed doors of espionage within the president's cabinet. And just when the president becomes a suspect, he goes missing. The novel itself is set over uh, the span of three days, and it's a captivating page turner that's realistic from beginning to end. The book itself has been on the number one bestseller list for the New York Times, the USA Today, and the Wall Street Journal. The second book is The Woman in the Window, which was the debut novel of A.J. Finn brings back memories of that 1950s uh, movie, Rear Window, which starred James Stewart and Grace Kelly. The plot is, revolves around Anna Fox, who is a recluse. She lives alone in New York City, and she spends her time drinking wine, watching classic movies, and reminiscing about the old times in her life. She also frequently spies on her neighbors. After a new family moves across the way, she sees something she probably shouldn't have seen. And from there, her world deteriorates. You wonder, what's real? What's imagined? Who's in danger? As the book continues, nothing is as it seems to be. It was a number one bestseller earlier this year, and Fox, a cinema production company, is in the process of developing a screenplay for this particular book. The last part of this book talk that I'd like to highlight is The Great American Read. The Great American Read is an eight-part PBS series hosted by Meredith Vieira that explores and celebrates the power of reading told through the prism of America's 100 best loved novels. This TV series features entertaining and informative documentary segments that include celebrities, notable authors, and book lovers from around the uh, United States. Already three episodes in, the series attempts to investigate how and why writers create their fictional worlds, how they're affected by such stories, and what of these hundred books tells us about our shared experience as readers. The list of 100 books span from classics like Great Expectations by Charles Dickens, The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald, and To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. It also covers diff a different series of books, like the Harry Potter series, the Lord of the Rings series, and the Twilight series. The list also covers current books with, that have been released within the last 10 years, like The Martian, Gone Girl, and The Alchemist. And books that are movies, like The Notebook, Da Vinci Code, and Jurassic Park. And lastly, it also covers young adult reads, which you might be interested in doing with your son or daughter, teenager, at home. Books like The Book Thief, The Hatchet, and The Hunger Games series. For more, inform more information about The Great American Read, you can log on to pbs.org, where you can watch full episodes. Simply put, The Great American Read has books for anybody. If you're interested in diving into a book, you can come down, come down to the 
Warhammer Free Library, where we can give you the, the full list of the 100 books that are on the Great American Read. For this next segment, I'd like to talk about some of our programs that we'll be offering and some of the services that you may or may not be aware of. For some of our upcoming events, the Wareham Free Library Foundation will be putting on a talent show. They'll be presenting Wareham's Got Talent. Our first guest author that will be visiting the library will be Darcy H. Lee. Lee will be coming to the library on Saturday, October 13th from 12 to 2 p.m. We should be reading from her book, Ghosts of Plymouth, Massachusetts. While most everyone knows about the Pilgrims landing in Plymouth in 1620, and Plymouth also being the home of the first Thanksgiving, the real story is a tale of grim beginnings with plague, desperation, massacre, murder, and fear. Lee will highlight some of the stories that include a shocking crime that occurred on Legan Street, the ghastly crew of General Arnold, which ha haunts not just one, not two, but three different locations, and a ghastly Victorian couple who wanders around Barrio Hill. Our second guest author that will be coming to the library will be Tim Weisberg, who is also a Wareham resident. He'll be visiting the library on Tuesday, October 16th from 6 to 7 p.m. Weisberg is an author, radio host, and paranormal researcher who brings a journalistic approach to investigating the unknown. His two books that he's written include Ghosts of the South Coast and Haunted Objects, Stories of Ghosts on Your Shelf. And now I'd like to spend some time talking about the services that we have here at the Warham Free Library. Don't have a printer, scanner, or fax machine? Come to the library where we can help you with your needs. Printing and photocopying is 15 cents per page, while our scanning and faxing services are $1 a page. If you're interested in sending a fax, you can visit our circulation desk where our circulation uh, staff can help you out. And for scanning, you can come to the reference desk and I'll be helping you out. Did you know that you can also rent fishing poles from the library? You can check out a fishing pole at our main branch here at Marion Road or our onset branch down at the Spinney Library. We also provide information on how you can get a fishing license. One of our other services that we offer is the Adult Reading Partners. If you're an adult in need of one-on-one -on -one training, the Reading Partners program helps provide free confidential tutoring for Wareham adults out of school youth over the age of 16. Help can be provided for computer basics, test prep like the high set test or the MTELs, English as a second language, and basic technical support, along with adult education and basic money managing skills. For more information, you can visit us at the library or send an email to readingpartners at gmail.com. I'd also like to talk about our fall story time hours, running from 10 a.m. to 11.15 a.m. at the main branch will be our story time on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. Saturdays will also feature a visit from Miss Bethany. On Mondays, story time will be 10.30 to 11.15 at the Spinney Branch down in Onset. For more information, you can contact the Children's Librarian, Marsha Hickey, at 508-295-2343 at extension 1014. And lastly, I'd like to talk about Internet Basics class, classes that we'll be having here at the library that I'll be teaching. If you'd like to know how to use a mouse, a keyboard, access the internet, set up an email account and an address book, and then learn how to stay safe online, classes will meet on Tuesdays in October from 1 to 2 p.m. Spaces are limited to five, and they'll be taking place here at the main branch. For more information, you can call my phone number at 508-295-2343 at extension 1012. The last segment that I'd like to focus on today are tips on how to stay safe on the internet. 
or we teach our children to avoid strangers in public. Everyone needs to follow the advice of being really cautious online when accessing your information. The most vulnerable group of adults that are susceptible to online fraud are seniors. A 2015 study done by True Financial Link found that $30 billion is lost by seniors each year due to online scams. To avoid being scammed, here are a few basic safety tips. Number one, never assume that a stranger online is trustworthy. Unless you 100% know you're talking online to someone that you know, whether it's by email, video chat, or instant message, they're likely looking to take advantage of you. If you see a message with an offer for a prize, don't believe it because it could be someone trying to get your information or install malicious software on your computer. Number two, never provide any of your sensitive information online. While some websites are trustworthy, like the Mass Health Connector website and some government websites, there are others that are scams online that are designed to trick you to give the scammer your private information. A customer service representative from a company might ask you for your bank account or even your social security number. If you have concerns about trusting the email or the website, always, always, always call the customer service representative of the company that emailed you. And number three, never assume that someone who knows things about you is someone you can trust. It is so easy for these or for scammers to get your information because sometimes your church groups or the other organizations you belong to put their information online. Other times, scammers get the information illegally. And because a person can easily find information against you, always be cautious when you're communicating with strangers, even if they know your full name, the address, even the number of children or the pets that you have, don't trust them. And now here are a, a couple of common sense scams to be on the lookout for. Number one, email scams. Sometimes these scams will be a request for a short-term loan where a message says that they're in quote-unquote dire need of help and they'll return your loan many times over at a date very close by. Other scams are looking for your personal information so they can steal your identity. Number two, the second scam to be on the lookout for is a request to validate your banking information. Scammers make emails look like they're from real banks, even down to the presentation of the message, even the email address that's used. Remember, banks never ask you for your username and password. That kind of scam can be used to gain access to your personal online accounts. And the third scam to be on the lookout for is website pop-ups and warnings. Some of them are harmless, you know, those ads that pop up that come out of nowhere, but others are malicious. Oftentimes, scammers will say, congratulations, messages saying you've won a prize, or other messages that say that you've been infected with the virus and you need to download the software immediately. Both tactics play with your emotions and encourage you to act quickly. If these come up, close the window or tap quickly and never click on any of the links. If your computer is locked out or we can't really access any of the other buttons, just simply turn it off and that should solve the problem. I'd like to conclude by talking about some of the other services that we have here at the library. If you don't have a computer at home and need to access the internet, come down to the library where we have access to high-speed internet and word processing software. We also have headphones that you can check out at the circulation desk with your library card. And lastly, I'd like to talk about reference services, the services that I offer here at the library as a reference and outreach librarian. If you need help looking for information, whether it's online, whether it's a book, or if you need help with a computer program or an iPad or a laptop or something you're not sure about, come and see me at the reference desk. I'll be certainly gl glad to help you out. I also offer historical and genealogical resources that can be available to you. And I can also help you find that next book that you're looking to find to read. Thank you for joining us for today's program. I hope you will be able to join us for our next episode where we're highlighting our children's programming, talking to children's librarian, Marsha Hickey.